Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the comments to a recent video, somebody asked me to do the recently launched capstone mission launched on an electron rocket from Rocket Lab. And the purpose of the mission is to test out the trajectory that gets you into a lunar halo orbit that eventually Lunar Gateway will get into. And so it's just a tiny little CubeSat, a 12 unit CubeSat that is supposed to get into that orbit. And well, I'm not too sure about the whole trajectory and getting into the halo orbit thing because that's another business that will require Principia. I have no idea about the details of the intended orbit actually. So I can't test that. But uh, perhaps what the person wanted was the actual capstone satellite and that I can provide. So I have decided to make the capstone satellite. Uh, well, uh, at least a reasonable flat facsimile of it. I did not create this electron rocket though. Somebody already had an electron rocket. There's Super Penguin's electron rocket. I'll link the link to in the video description. And I'll also link my RO configs for it. Uh, there are other details we'll get into once we get outside on the pad. But basically what we have here is a capstone uh, satellite and it is configured to the correct mass. Uh, I don't know what fuel it uses. No source seemed to mention what it used. It clearly had thrusters at the bottom, uh, but I have assumed hydrazine. And uh, its size allows for perhaps more than four liters, but I've set it to four liters altogether and three liters of hydrazine. It might have more, I don't know, but that means it's 22 kilograms dry, 25 kilograms with the fuel. And otherwise, it's got all sorts of science built in, in theory, assuming this works. And of course, it's got the solar panels. Uh, also, it has this thing that extends out here, I assume. I don't know what it's actually supposed to do. Uh, but it's got some science built in. And it is part of my small rockets pack, which has all the CubeSats. So it's just another CubeSat, but it's a much better CubeSat than some of these others, like this three unit one. They're, these are configurable. Uh, this one will have stuff built in and not be so configurable. Uh, what it has built in is the thermometer, barometer, and gravioli detector, you know. The basic science instruments are in here, as you can see. And it's got the deployable solar panels to recharge. And it's got tiny little thrusters. So that is the idea. And so it will be usable in, say, a career mode like the RP2000 career mode. And so, yep. That is why I made it, because I felt it would be useful. Because uh, uh, I'm not going to be trying to get it into the correct or uh, correct trajectory to do its intended mission. At least it'll be useful in some respect. Uh, you will still need a decoupler, and so we have a little decoupler here that we really hope does not decouple it really forcefully. I'm trying, uh, I'll, I keep reducing this as much as possible, but we'll see. Um, maybe reducing the diameter will be good. I get the feeling it's gonna fling it out somewhere weird. I had already made the photon interplanetary stage that's part of the of the uh, small rockets pack and I've adjusted its numbers a little bit so that the combination of the capstone satellite and the photon interplanetary stage and any likely engine that you're gonna put on it is going to be uh, under the 300 kilogram limit for uh, the for the electron rocket at the moment. So that is the intention there. So we are under the 300 kilograms. I'm using a procedural payload adapter, even though this Super Penguin electron rocket has the uh, a sort of weird payload adapter sort of thing at, uh, that comes out of the second stage I've decided. Here, I'll show you. See, uh, it sort of makes its own payload adapter here, but I don't want that. I'm, and also the fairings that come with the electron rocket, this electron rocket, tend to make the second stage spin out. So I'm using the procedural one and the procedural fairings for safety's sake. So we have those. And then we have the second stage, the Rutherford engine from the mod, and the first stage and the other Rutherford engines from the mod. And also another payload adapter here as the interstage since I felt that that was safe, safer to use. So I actually I don't, don't know where it has the interstage in this mod. So anyway, but that is the idea and we will try and launch this, make sure that the satellite is working and then uh, I'll link the updated version of the small rockets pack which will have both the photon and this satellite in it 
along with other things. Now, one thing that I have to mention is that I've made the photon interplanetary stage as large as I can, that it could fit into the fairing and also not overburden the electron rocket. And this seems to be the right size given its capabilities. Also, it needs to be able to do a Venus mission, right? That was one intention of theirs to launch a little atmospheric probe into Venus. So for it to be able to do that, it has to be about this size. So actually it's overpowered for the moon actually. But the problem is we don't actually know what propellant it uses. They said a green hypergolic propellant, but we don't know what that is. They're being shy about it. So we're just going with MH and Mon3 here and the engine, the hypercurie engine, we don't know what its stats are at all. So I'm just using one of uh, one kilonewton thruster from the Schurstrat engine pack, which seems like a good fit, and it runs on MMH and Mon3. The RCS thrusters also are configured to MMH and Mon3. So when we find out what the actual propellant is, then I can configure it for that, and if we can find the stats out for the engine, we can do that. But for now, we just have this makeshift one kilonewton thruster, and we're using MMH and Mon3, which you know, depending on the definition of green, I mean, it could turn you green. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, something like that. Uh, all right. So we are launching from Mahia in New Zealand, where I think the capstone rocket actually launched, and we'll see how that works. And this is a test. I might f find out that there's something wrong with it, but here we are. And yes, here in New Zealand, we are going to head south. I am going to let a KOS script control it. Uh, if you have my RO configurations for this rocket, which again will be in the video description, uh, it'll be marked worked in progress because uh, uh, when I configured uh, this rocket, it was in the early days of me configuring things for realism overhaul. I marked everything as work in progress. Um, so I haven't really changed that. And actually, it, there are some issues still, which we will see momentarily. Um, it, you'll note that it seems to still have the stock plumes. Now, the problem is that this mod, this Electron Rocket, comes with its own real plume configuration. So I can't configure this for real plumes, because the two will conflict. Uh, so, it's got its own real plume configuration, and something is up with that real plume configuration. I don't know what. Uh, so... That's just how it is. Otherwise, it's just my policy not to sort of do stuff that other people have done, or at least try not to. Sometimes I'm unaware that they have already done rockets and stuff like that, but as long as I'm aware of it, I try not to duplicate efforts. We have lots of electric charge here. I sort of overdid it. Uh, it depends on how much electric charge the Rutherford engines actually consume. I think I was going with the engine configuration that is part of Realism Overhaul already, and it seemed to have them consuming 7 kilowatts. And so that's what we have right now, basically. And how much electric charge you put into the electron rocket is sort of a question mark. I don't know how big their batteries are, so... The one thing is, it's consuming electric charge, as the engine should, because they're electric pump-fed, and it has enough. So, I figured those were the important things. Okay, coming up on the end of the first stage. Separation and ignition. This seems, I, I don't know, maybe it's a real plume? I don't know, but it, obviously it's offset a little bit, for some reason. I tried overwriting the real plume of my own configuration without deleting the original one, and that did not work. So. Okay, fairing set. Oh, that's clean. Um, it is possible because the photon stage is so big that it could clip into the fairings, but it looks like it was okay. Now, as far as launch timing is concerned, Really, for the trajectory that they're planning on to get to the moon, you could launch any time, because uh, it takes months to get there, and if it takes months to get there, it really doesn't matter. The moon, you know, the moon will be there when you get there, uh, if you got to take months to get there, so. 
but uh, we've I, I've sort of set the timing up so that we'll be getting there much sooner. It's not actually months to get there, it's months to make orbit around the moon. It sort of swings by the moon in fancy ways that they do with their computer simulations. And that is all beyond me. It beats me because the photon interplanetary stage could probably have enough delta V to actually send it, put it into orbit around the moon. If it can, after all, if it can get a little atmospheric probe into the atmosphere of Venus, as they said they were intending to do, it can surely get this thing into orbit around the moon. But I mean, and of course, with hypergolic fuels, presumably storable. I mean, maybe it's they're not storable. I don't know. But yeah, should be able to do that. But I guess they wanted to test out the fancy trajectory. There is a bit of a roll. There's no RCS on here. You might want to add some. But I have no problem with this roll right now. Oh, it just occurred to me. Uh, it seems like it's drawing electric charge from that. So we'll need to make sure to set flow priority lower. Yeah. And I'll just make sure that's topped off with electric charge. And we're just making orbit here. And the probe is topped off with electric charge, so that's fine. Okay, let me reorient the camera view. And separate off the payload. And unfortunately, I didn't have a downward facing thrusters on this. So let me just. Yeah, uh, we got a little bit of a burst of the main engine to get that off. Again, it's going into a pole orbit for sure. And beyond that, we just need to get close to the descending node because we're going to have a huge inclination with respect to the moon anyway. The simple way to get there with this is to just do an off-plane transfer, as you see and fiddle around with it. Now, whether they would want to get close or not, well, I guess they would. Close at the periapsis end for sure, it's just... Anyway, a halo orbit is strange, so I'm not going to get into that. I'm just gonna get into a loose orbit around the moon and call it a day. So that'll be a fine transfer, seven day transfer and the photon interplanetary stage can do that. And I also don't know what fuel they were using in capstone itself, so I've just gone with hydrazine there. Uh, it seems unlikely that it would be nitrogen because that would take a lot of space, but it's possible. It depends on exactly how much delta V they need to do the maneuvers that they have planned, and I don't know how much delta V they need to do the maneuvers that they have planned. Okay, and ignition. This one has a really broad bloom cover. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. Fizz warp. Okay, well, we'll let the little satellite do the rest. Now, how forceful is this decoupler gonna be? Oh, <gasps> the game crashed! Oh, maybe I tuned the decoupler to a point where it it doesn't understand the number. <laughs> maybe it's dividing by zero or something. I don't know. The game just crashed when I tried to decouple. That's not a good sign. Hmm. Well, I, I won't belabor the point here. I'll just uh, cheat it into orbit so that we can test the rest of it. Okay, but we do have a technical problem here with just separating it off of the photons, so maybe we should try something. And one option is, instead of using the procedural decoupler that I have there, is maybe just tweak scaling the payload adapter from the small rockets pack down, and you'll need tweak scale for this, of course, uh, down to a really small level. Okay, we are back on a lunar proximal course. 
uh, well, approximately. Uh, it's tough to tell. It advertised something, but we're not quite getting that. Let's kill rotation here. All right, well, let's see if the decoupling works properly this time. Okay, so with a uh, tweak scale down payload adapter with control core from the small rockets pack, we're okay. And then we can extend solar panel, and I'll also extend the top thing a little bit. I didn't have exact size information, but I assumed that the whole thing had to fit within the 12 unit CubeSat sort of size, so that is the idea. Um, it looks like we're recharging. Uh, let me uh, retract solar panel. That's consuming charge. Okay, I set it to 20 watts. I have no idea how much it's supposed to consume. And then when it extends, we recharged. And let's say we turn... Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, okay, okay. Um, let's not have smart ASS do that. <laughs> um, maybe the... RCS thrusters are a little bit overpowered, but it looks like it is properly... Yeah, it wouldn't get sunlight like that, so the solar panels are working the way they should. Okay, well, now, let's say we do a mid-course adjustment to try and get to the moon here. Well, see, there, there it is. Only three liters of hydrazine, so... But then again, it's only a 25-kilogram thing. Okay, well, that looks good enough. So, a minor adjustment. Let's see. Hmm, I should turn on comms. Let me verify comms. Enable comm network. No, I don't know if... I guess that doesn't work when we've got something in flight, maybe? Well, we got lines. Alright. Okay, communication seems to be working. It's just a direct line. This is not a relay satellite. I did put... well, it gets blurry when we get close because of the post-processing mod KS3P, but... I did put downward-facing thrusters on this, thankfully. Oh, maybe I shouldn't let it do that. <laughs> Okay, let's see. So it's 2.9 units now, and let's see how much it takes to do this 7 meters per second or so. Yeah, I mean, uh, we might have maybe 300, 400 meters per second there. I could probably calculate it, but anyway. Oh, it's not admitting that I have an encounter. But that would be enough to get a loose capture. So it should be about right. Again, I don't know exactly how much they need for what they're planning on doing. Oh, is it on the next go around? It's on the next orbit. That's why I was having so much trouble. Okay, well, we're pointed vaguely in the right direction. Just wanted to get closer to the moon. It's a cute little thing. Log uh, temperature, well, we won't get science because this is sandbox mode, but they are available. Continuing to periapsis. Okay, capturing. Okay, it's just gonna barely make it. Very barely. We ran out of juice and basically the loosest kind of lunar orbit. So that's probably right. That part's probably right. Because what's the point in taking months to get there if it can easily get into orbit, right? So, yeah. It'll totally deplete if you try to do it like this. I feel like that's appropriate. Because obviously they would want to keep some station keeping fuel so it'll actually take less than this. But there you have it, the capstone mission. I mean, it's just a box, but it's a useful box. So uh, for the purposes of the RP2000 career mode, it might be helpful. So with this being how it is, I'll link it in the video description. It's just uh, an update to the small rockets pack. 
and then I'll also link the Electron Rocket from Super Penguin and my RO configuration for it. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.